the weekly show with David J. Maloney. This week, David chats with iconic actor Henry Thomas. And now, here's your host, David J. Maloney. On tonight's show, we've got part two of my interview with actor Henry Thomas. He originally won our hearts as the little boy Elliot, one of the most iconic films of all time, Steven Spielberg's E.T. The Extraterrestrial. He has more recently exploded back into our lives with roles in The Haunting of Hill House, Bly Manor, Dr. Sleep, and Midnight Mass. Back with us again tonight is actor Henry Thomas, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's obvious from looking at your CV that you never stop working. You've always remained a working actor, but for younger people who've seen E.T. but have missed out on your other work, it's almost like you exploded back onto the scene when you met Mike Flanagan. Um, I know yeah. he's been building his brand for a while, but ever since Hill House came out, it's like every good horror film or show that comes out, he's he, he seemingly has had some sort of hand in making. You have a unique perspective having worked so closely with him on so many projects. Talk to us a little bit about the man himself. When did you first hear about him? I met Mike in 2014 in a general meeting, but he was talking about this film that he was doing, uh, Ouija, Origin of Evil, uh, which is sort of a, a sequel, prequel to uh, a Blumhouse movie called Ouija, which I, I hadn't seen. I, I'm, you know, ironically, I'm not much of a horror fan. I don't know much about the horror world, but I met Mike and he said, I'm a big fan of your work and I want to cast you in this uh, as Father Tom, but I want to, I want to cast you in everything that I do. And I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I was about to fade into obscurity. You know, I was just probably a couple of years away from just kind of slipping off the edge of the known world. And here's this guy who wants to, like, say I'm his favorite actor and put me in everything. So I didn't believe him. You know, I thought he was just selling me some Hollywood line. But the part came through and I did it. And I had a blast working with him. And he was the most organized director I've ever worked with. You know, like everything is lined out. He's got a shot list that he's built sets around. So I was kind of taken aback by his enthusiasm and his uh, proficiency, I, I suppose. And then he kept good on his word and he kept feeding me these parts you know every few months i would get a call and he would say i got something do you want to do it and i had never experienced that before so it was kind of fun and it's been fun working with him because he never gives me a dull um a dull job i suppose i always have to either make something out of it or find something to um to do with it that that kind of sets it apart and as an actor that's been uh, a challenge and and a pleasure to work with characters like this over the years it's been fun hill house i mean my god that show felt like it came out of nowhere and then it just took netflix completely by storm is that how it happened for you as well? Like what you were talking about how kind of the role came about? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Mike had told me, Mike was like, yeah, I want to cast you as a lead in this movie. And I said, well, Mike, the studio is never going to let you cast me as the lead. Well, uh, don't, don't be so sure. You know, then a few months later, you know, it's like, it's not the lead but I have this role for you that I think you're really going to like, and you can really do, you know? So, <laughs> uh, you know, it was a bit of a, a funny, like Hollywood shuffle, but I always, I always thought it was, I always thought it was admirable that Mike kept trying, you know? <laughs> I mean, I kid you not. I mean, it gave me so much unadulterated, uh, 
joy to see you killing it in that show. And I guess it just proved once again of what Spielberg saw in you all those years was correct, you know? <laughs> um, so to me, Mike Flanagan is, is one of the best directors working today. And so now you've kind of worked with uh, essentially, in my mind, two royals. How do their styles compare? What are their unique strengths when you set them? When you, I mean, where do they, where are they very similar and where are they different? I, I think they're all very similar in um, attention to and management of the story. You know, being able to bridge the gap between uh, audience and uh I suppose the 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 inner voice of the characters. I think the great directors always have that in mind, working in conjunction, uh, which is which I think is difficult to do. You know, it's difficult to see the the piece as a whole before before it's assembled. What was it like working with so many child actors in the haunting of Hill House? I mean, the Crane Kids, ha having been in their shoes. Well. Uh, I was blown away by how professional they all were and how, you know, well-trained they all were, you know, well-disciplined. I was you didn't so- You have to worried. go find them on their bikes? No, no, I know. <laughs> I, I, well, that's what I kept saying. I kept saying I, I wouldn't make it in today's world of child actors. Like these guys, they're like, you know, they're like playing instruments and- you know, like heading up their social media empires and stuff, you know, it's like, I was, I was never, I was never of that ilk, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. But these guys were amazing because Violet McGraw, who uh, played young Nell, I had this two page scene with her and she was six years old. And I thought, oh man, this is going to be a slog. Um, you know, this little girl, you know, we'll have to shoot her stuff first and then I'll be there by myself probably doing the rest of, you know, she was so on it. She knew the scene better than I did. Uh, she never missed a beat. She picked up her cues. I mean, she's five or six years old. I couldn't believe it. Did any of them have any idea uh, of your background, of your of your ET pedigree? Yeah, they all knew. They all knew, and you know, i I gave them all um, I gave them all a gift, an ET related thing. I think I gave them a a, a book about the making of ET, um, and signed it for them all, as you know, as kind of a a starting gift. Now, now you said you were never a big fan of horror films before signing on to do Hill House. I've always wondered what it's got to be like to act in a horror film or show. How do you get yourself to a place where you can accurately portray the the horror that your character has seen or felt? I mean, how do you how do you do that? Where does that where do you where especially if you don't come from that that genre? I guess where does that come from? Where no, do you draw that from? I don't. I. I spend a lot of my time laughing on horror sets because, you know, usually like the first and second act, you're building these incredibly intricate characters with, you know, backgrounds and worlds that they come from. And, you know, they've got real struggles. And then in the third act, you just throw it all out the window <laughs> and do whatever illogical thing the script says, you know, to get to the end. But, you know, it's it's kind of funny and it's ludicrous at times. So, um, but I think it's also kind of gallows humor, you know, cause you have to deal with a lot of macabre stuff. So laughing about it kind of takes the sting out of it, I suppose. Um, you and Timothy Hutton play, in this, play the same character, just one year younger and one older. You both did a fantastic job of mimicking each other. How did that work? How did you guys devise that? And how did we, that come about? 
we hung out together for a total of about two days. We went to the aquarium in Atlanta together. We had a, a rollicking good time and we just talked. And then the next thing you know, when we were on set, he was doing a little bit of me and I was doing a little bit of him and it all worked. I think he did more of me than I did of him because my, my stuff was at the beginning of the shooting schedule. So he was on set a couple of times um, for scenes that I had done. And I saw in his body language, he, he stole some of my tics, so. What was it like working with the phenomenal Carla Gugino as, as your wife? I mean, I, I was kind of, I was invested in that relationship and it's a testament to the work you guys did together. What made that relationship come across so well? Well, first of all, she's the best. She is a great lady and a wonderful professional actress. Uh, she is so, so well disciplined and she's so, uh, interested in making it the best. Uh, so you're always in good hands when you're working with Carla. And I just, I really enjoyed getting to know her and uh, she always is, she's kind of like, um, she she's kind of like royalty. That's what she seems like when she comes on set, you know, it's like everybody, kind of has an audience with her and kind of defers to her and like you know you 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 just want to earn her respect but uh at the same time you feel like she could probably kill you with her stilettos <laughs> <laughs> so so coming off of hill house you've got to tell me what it was like getting the call to work on Dr. Sleep. I mean, you were tasked with the with, with accurately portraying one of the most iconic characters and roles in cinema history, that of Jack Torrance in The Shining. How did that role come about? That was another one of um, Mike Flanagan's phone calls saying, I have two parts for you. Now, there's one that only works for a day, but I think it's pretty iconic. Uh, but I understand if you don't want to do it. That's how he snares me. He says, I understand if you don't want to do it. And then I say, well, wait, why wouldn't I want to do it? Yeah, so he talked to me about playing this role. And I said, yeah, that sounds fun. And, you know, as long as we're not doing a send-up of, of Jack Nicholson's performance or doing a Jack Nicholson impersonation uh and, you know, he, of course, did not want to do that. What did Mike ask of you when trying to explain what he wanted? I mean, how did he try to direct you in, in those scenes? Well, I, I think Mike was dialing me back a lot because I think I was I was making more definitive jumps into Jack Nicholson and into Lloyd and into Delbert Grady. And it was... Like, because it's the most work I've ever done for one day of work. Like I had to shave my head a month ahead of that and do a bunch of wig fittings. And I only had really two scenes. So I had worked on these scenes for a month and I had sort of, I guess, extrapolated like too much. I had like done too preconceived much. preconceived notions of yeah, like, oh, this is where he is now. And here he is. And, you know, so I got to set and Mike was like, no, 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 no. We're doing this and this. And, you know, it's I, I was really happy with the with the scenes and it was fun. And a lot of people didn't even realize uh, that it was me. And you're talking about, I mean, because you had, you were finding yourself back with so many co-stars from Hill House, you know, for The Haunting of Blind Manor, Midnight Mass. I mean, you had a lot of the same co-stars, right? A lot of the same, yeah. Um, but I didn't really uh, work with them on 
on doctor sleep very much you know it was uh i was just in and out it was just because it was like a couple of days there but you know what though it it still feels like a lot of the great directors do this having kind of a a gr- core group you know when you look at uh scorsese when you look at tarantino when you look at you know there are certain people that you know that certain they like to use a lot of the same same people i mean heck how many harrison how many how many spielberg movies has harrison ford been in you know it's true yeah yeah and it's it's nice and i understand it you know you 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 kind of it's you approach it like i'm going to get the right tool for the job and i understand how this guy works and that woman uh brings this to the role and you know it, it's it's great i understand it as a director and it's fun as an actor to to know the performers that you're working with and and have a chance to work with them in different in different characters does does it make life easier as an actor i mean does that establish relationship help you to be your best or does it somehow i mean i i, I can't think how it would take away but maybe i don't know uh no i think it 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 does help you know it it takes away the getting to know you hour or you know the surprises of oh i did a scene with this guy and this is the way they work and you know i'm it threw me or something you know i mean it happens so so it is it is nice to to work with the same people especially if you like them and and luckily all of the people that flanagan usually hires are are good good actors but also pretty decent folk usually so with, with midnight mass um almost like having a religious experience watching that show um yeah y- you were in on some of the monologues that uh, link later so powerfully gave what did you think of his performance and what he was able to deliver there well I, he was fantastic in that role um and it was so much to do it was so much to remember and and so much performance you know and he did a lot of those big speeches uh you know back to back in the same day um you know i sat in the church for most of midnight mass like as a you know featured extra uh most days and so i got to see a lot of uh, a lot of his work and uh, i was very impressed i mean we all were very impressed did do you ever have like holy crap i'm feeling things right now moment like so many of us did watching like i mean does it if i mean when you're actually in it and somebody's doing something like that i mean obviously it's designed to evoke certain emotions people watching it on film but can, do you have moments where somebody's giving such a performance that you act, that actually evokes the same emotion from you as an as as an actor or just as a person literally on set oh for sure yeah and it's great when you have speeches like that that you can see because it really you know it's an it's an unadulterated performance um and so it helps a lot you of times, draw too, right? It helps you draw. Oh, no, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's all happening at once in real time, which in film, you don't get that a lot. So it's it's nice. And, you know, Mike Flanagan, he really, really, uh, he loves a speech. You know, he loves a monologue. So we we have an opportunity to do a lot of that kind of stuff and in in most of his productions but midnight mass was particularly heavy on that of your many collaborations with mike at this point do you have a favorite or is it kind of like picking between children or hill house is my favorite uh in, in terms of the total project like how it how it turned out um I love the story and I think the performances are all great and it's fun. And my personal favorite character that I've played is uh, Lord Henry Wingrave from Haunting of Bly Manor. He was the most fun that I've had. Uh, and my character in the upcoming Fall of the House of Usher was a lot of fun to play. 
So wrapping us up this year, I believe marks the 40th anniversary of ET. And I understand yes. you recently reunited with Drew Barrymore, D Wallace and uh, Robert McNaughton. When was the last time you'd all been together like that? Before this year, the last time we had all gotten together was at the 20th anniversary for ET uh, at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, where John Williams conducted the orchestra live uh, with the with the film. And that was a wonderful. Do you ever get emotional thinking back to those people that experienced those 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 memories? I mean, it feels like they're all kind of my family, you know, they're all some kind of cousins uh, once removed, but we, we keep in touch and we see each other at these weird events every so many years. <laughs> like weddings and like, like, like with, with normal families, with weddings and funerals, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, oh, um, well, the reason why it. I ask is because I wanted to ask you if, if Hill House or anything else was able to top that ET experience or, or because of it being what it was, you know, it, 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 it is that's always going to be the, the most cherished thing or have other things come up, you know, or, well, or are they just, like I said, picking between, trying to pick between children? In a way, it is picking between children, but it's also what the audience finds. I think that's that's really the the key deciding factor. Because now I experience a, a younger generation of fans who know me from Hill House and don't realize that I'm the guy from E.T. Yeah. You know, or they put it together after the fact. And so, you know, if if there's any law or 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 something that we can follow, it's just that time will change everything. Right. So do you have any new projects in the works right now? Uh I have a couple of things, uh, some independent films that I'm doing in the first quarter of, of next year. And I have, uh, you know, Fall of the House of Usher, Mike Flanagan uh, is going to be released on Netflix at some point. I don't know when um, next year in 2023. And that's all I know. Uh, I have various irons in the fire you know, I have a book that I I wrote that was published in 2019 uh, that's being printed in, in paperback this year. Um, it's called The Window in the Mirror. So you can pick it up if you like The Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. It's sort of of that ilk. And for those and who- otherwise, I'm just otherwise I'm just working, you know, same old thing. Yeah. I, I, for those uh, whom are not already following you on, on various socials, but would like to, are there places people can follow you? Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at H.J. Thomas Jr. Uh, J.R. Henry, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, Henry Thomas. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on your show. I've I've enjoyed it.